Former governor of Anambra State, Peter Obi, has dumped the People's Democratic Party, PDP, and his presidential ambition. He explained that recent developments within the party were responsible for his resignation from the opposition party and withdrawal from its presidential primary slated for the end of May. Obi was one of the 15 PDP presidential aspirants cleared by Senator David Mark-led Presidential Screening Committee last month. The party had recently thrown its presidential ticket open, attracting rebuke from social cultural organizations like Ohanes Indibo, which maintained that political parties like the PDP and the APC should zone their tickets to the southeast geopolitical zones. Well, joining us to discuss these are um, Oponabo Inko Tario, a political analyst, and Ezekiel Nyaitok, who's a politician. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for joining us. Thanks for having Thanks us. Good evening, Great. Uh, I'm good evening, Nigeria. Mr. Nyaitok, I'll start with you because you have been a P PDP good member been before. <laughs> And um, I remember the last time we had a conversation, you talked about some of the things that happened within the People's Democratic Party, um, you know, um, internal democracies wise. Um, with the message that was put out on Peter Albee's social media handle, of course, the letter headed statement and the abrupt, you know, resignation from the party, does it seem uh, like something that was done in a haste or something that had been in the works? Yes. I, I have been a member of the PDP for a very long time. And in the year 2010, I woke up one morning, called a press conference, and resigned my membership of the PDP. It was at the time that um, I was enjoying everything that could be enjoyed in the PDP relationship from the presidency to my state to my governor, and um, uh, everything was going well for me by way of being a party man. As a matter of fact, if you look in the social media, you see my son, my first son, Anyekan, having a handshake with Mr. President then in his office. That's a one-on-one -on -one with Mr. President, while I had a one-on-one -on -one with my governor. So everything was going on well. But I asked myself, is this really what I want as a person? And I, the answer was obviously no. PDP had all the opportunities, everything that was needed for it to be in power for the next 60 years. But they lost the vision. They lost the focus. It became not longer that vehicle of governance, but a kind of you know, game of thrones, the powers. It was about the paraphernalia of the office, the powers of the office, it was not about governance anymore, and I couldn't stand it. Fast forward, what happened? They lost five governors, and they said, oh, it doesn't matter. It couldn't be bothered. There, nothing will happen. We'll still be in power. I called them and said, there's something really wrong, fundamentally. Think about it. Oh, you are being intellectual. Forget it. Bottom line, they lost election. Now, today, the two most viable candidates, three, let me say three, Three most viable courted candidates are from the PDP. Who are they? Pankwaso, today, do by any rating, is the man that controls the North. Um, uh, Mr. Peter Obi, by any, and in fact, is one of the biggest news, and there was no news if you were not something from the PDP. And third, even former President Jonathan who is being courted for more reasons than one, is from the PDP. And PDP has let the three of them go without thinking. So I think that I, I, Mr. Peter Obi is a friend and he's a very intellectual person. He's a very calculating person. And he's wanted to show himself, prove himself. So he got to the Nigerian public and he sold himself, Nigerians bought him. And he was expecting that PDP will think for the first time in a long time. But, and he pushed it till when the, the window was about to close. And he said, guy, I can't take this anymore. But always, I think he knew that there was a plan B. It's like a discussion that I had with Mr. Kwankwaso, who is my very good friend as well. 
And he told me something, which, I mean, there's nothing to hide. He said, look, I'm a politician. I've been into politics. If I go into primaries, he said, this guy, he, he called four, two, three, four names, big names. He said, each of them will beat him in the primaries. Each of them will beat him silly in the primaries. But the four... Oh, I think that um, we lost that connection with uh, Mr. Nyaito. Mr. Nyaito, can you hear me? I think that we lost that connection. Okay, open up. I'm going to toss to you until we get him back. Um, a lot of people have called out um, former Governor Peter Albee saying that this is a huge mistake and that he probably didn't think it over before making this move. But do you think this was a huge mistake on his part, leaving the PDP? Well, I, I don't think so. I mean, uh, Peter B probably would have, uh, or definitely would have committed on his actions, on the steps it was to take, would have weighed the pros and cons, and uh, probably convinced that, yes, this was the best option for him. Obviously, he wasn't quite explicit in his letter, no doubt about that. Mm -hmm. But the truth is, Peter B is from um, a zone where you have more... Uh, candidates with less delegates. That is one. And uh, there is the possibility that definitely he wasn't, he wasn't going to win the primaries. And so he felt it, there was no point continuing with it because you have how many candidates from the Southeast? And when you look at the delegates, how many delegates do they have? Or well, does the Southeast have? So obviously it's a blind alley and more so. Uh, he felt that uh, his chances in the PDP are quite dim because of the number of candidates there. So let him go to a party where he's going to be the only shining light. No doubt he has the clout, he has the uh, acceptability, the legitimacy, and so on. But definitely that would have been uh, quite difficult to achieve in the PDP, where the space is to a very large extent constricted. And I think that's why he defected. He withdrew from the PDP and also from the primaries and also defected. Hmm. Um, you said that he left because he, uh, you think it's the number of delegates that he had from his zone and he saw maybe the chances. In, in, in summary, the chances. Yes, no chances. Less delegates, more, yes. more, more aspirants. But... I mean, if it was just that, couldn't he have just, re, you know, stepped down and thrown his support um, behind someone else, as he did the last time when he supported former Vice President Atiku Abubakar? And I'm not insinuating that he should support him this time, but I'm saying, could he have not supported somebody else, maybe from the South? Um, no, that, that definitely is not an option. Because don't forget that there is a stern warning from the, the leaders of the South East that they should never play the second fiddle. Mm -hmm. That is number one. And, and number two, he's not ready. He wants to be the president. So he's not ready to uh, be the vice, vice president to anybody, if not even to his fellow evil brother. He doesn't be, believe that they are better. He believes he's better. But sadly, he probably is not going to achieve that dream, realize that dream on the platform of the PDP. And if there are chances that he's going to realize that dream, his dream will go to fruition on the platform of any other political party. Then why not leave? Why not defect? There's nothing wrong with that. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Well, as we all know, and those of us who've been watching social media, we could see that that same evening where he posted his resignation from the People's Democratic Party, he was seen shaking hands and meeting with the presidential candidate of the NNPP, which is um, former Governor Kwang Kwa So, which also has raised eyebrows. Now, you just mentioned that the South and the leaders have also, you know, sternly warned um, candidates, or rather aspirants, not to play second fiddle. If he's going to a political party where, and I'm, I'm saying this because I have interviewed the leadership of that party, and they had said succinctly to me that they have an unopposed presidential candidate. If this be true, um, what is the, uh, former Governor Peter Obi doing courting the NNPP leader, or rather presidential um, aspirant? Well, these are mere conjectures that you uh, that probably extrapolate from what we see, no doubt about that. Uh, not that we are quite sure of the facts. Yes, you might see him with uh, 
quack and so that, that does not mean that he's going to be the vice president running it to quack and not necessarily. We have not said so. We also hear that he might probably get to SDP. We also hear that Tinubu might probably also get to SDP. These are mere conjectures, so we are not certain. Um, I don't think that Peter Obi will defect from the PDP to any other party to be the vice presidential candidate of that party. Uh, then it really makes no sense because I, I really want to fathom the reasonableness in such an act. You can as well be the vice presidential candidate uh, to uh, the, an imagined PDP ca uh, 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 candidate uh, rather than defect. But again, probably he's done his own homework to realize who is going to emerge as a PDP candidate, a presidential candidate, and is not comfortable, or that person already has his own vice presidential candidate. Mm. So these are all things that, that's why I said uh, the letter is not explicit enough, you know. So these are things that probably you have considered and did not bring to public knowledge, because mm. it, 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 it did not actually give any cogent reason for defecting from the PDP. So he must have taken all these issues under advisement. Is it, am I going to be a presidential candidate? Or these other presidential candidates, you do already have a presidential candidate, then what will I be doing in the PDP? Let me defect from the PDP to a party where I might likely be the presidential candidate or a running mate to the presidential candidate. You know, so these are all the permutations, and these are all the considerations that he must have, uh, uh, that must have uh, uh, informed his decision mm. to move from the PDP to another political party that is yet to be disclosed to the public. All right, Mr. Nyaitok, I think we have you back. We lost you, um, you know, due to connection. Um, but I'm going to quickly uh, pose this question. Many have also criticized um, the former governor of being a, ma uh, uh, um, <laughs> a serial uh, defector, uh, that he moved from, the, from Africa <laughs> to the PDP, and now he's defecting again. Uh, who knows where he's going to. Uh, and that this might not necessarily play, um, you know, uh, in his favor. But then again, my other, the other question is, what does this do to the ambition of the Southeast, being that um, within the APC, I mean, aside from the Aboyan State governor who is interested in running for the presidency, we had Rochus Okoracha, uh, the senator, and, of, of course, Governor Peter will be in the PDP. What happens to that Southeast presidential ticket call? I, I think that what Mr. Peter Obi has done is uh, probably um, one of the best chances that, um, that the Southeast has um, to produce a president. How so? You know, yes, I'll tell you this. The very first thing is that within the two main political parties, the chances of any of the people from from the southeast getting the ticket is as slim as can be. But what Mr. I, I bring it back, Kwan Kwaso did of staying out and showing his force is what Mr. Peter Obi will do by stepping out and showing there's a force. One of the things we've not taken into consideration is understanding the current electoral act. And in this current electoral act, we are going to have six to eight months of campaigning. So what Mr. Peter Obi is going to do is take a party, run and gather momentum. Mr. Kwan Kwaso is going to take a party, he's already got a party, run and gather momentum. As they head into around September, it will be clear who is a principal and who is not. The ADC, you would have, I, I mentioned this in the morning during the newspaper review, just two days back, paraded 12 presidential aspirants. Mm. Nigerians couldn't believe the quality of the people, everything. Now, what we are starting to have is an animation of a mindset reset. Wow, there is an option, there is an alternative. Yes, they are in their enclaves, but because these people are largely motivated by the fact that APC, PDP, ideology, philosophy has failed and is not okay. They are now pandering to what Nigerians would want to see and hear. To that extent, 
we are coming and putting the fact that it's about nation first, Nigeria first, where I happen to be the DG, you know, as a result, as each of them gathers momentum individually, the ADC is there, no, going to have a presidential candidate that is going to be very strong. NNPP is there. SDP is there. My friend Wale Adewale is there, doing well as well. So that around September, October, there's going to be a second level of, you know, you know, talking about Nigeria, putting Nigeria first, put Nigeria above your personal ego, put Nigeria above your personal concerns. And there's going to be that converse, conversation and convergence. And it is at that point that you now start to forget about, you know, your, your ego, I must be, I must not be. You are willing to put down in the larger interest of the nation, you know, and form a government of national unity. Uh, I, foresee uh, uh, I, I, I love I love that optimism and where it's coming from. Um, and I don't also want to be a, a prophet of doom, but uh, looking at our you know, antecedents and how we are when it comes to politicking. We've seen it play out. We We've seen it play out cycle in, cycle out. How many politicians, we, I mean, even with what is playing out now, how many of them are, you know, showing oh, us signs no. of nationhood as opposed to interest? To what has ever happened in Nigeria? Yeah, but you know what I'll they say? That you, the marriage that's going to be good, you can tell from the Bachelor's Eve. So now, right now, can we really see any display of nationhood as, as opposed to what you're saying that we will begin to see? I don't know it's when. It's a process. It's a process that, that Kwan Kwaso will come out and stand alone, that ADC will come out and have 12 presidential candidates. And if you profile each of them, they are women and men of substance, that uh, Peter Obi will come out you see, we can't always be victims of our past. We need to be able to open up and smell the coffee. I'll tell you this. PDP thought this way when they said they'll be in power for, for, for 60 years because they thought that you cannot defeat an incumbent. Nigerians did that. Answers happened where we thought young people would not be able to organize themselves. It happened. Nigeria is a country that you can never say never. Because, okay. and, and finally, let me end on this note. It is for you and I to dare to be optimistic. Okay. We can't all be doing blind analysis. We must have that second cap of daring to be optimistic. Okay. Open up. I, I could hear you giggle. Um, because uh, I asked that question because the mind of the average voter is what we're playing at here. Now... We, we like the idea that there are more people that are coming up. Political parties are beginning to own, you know, their, you know, their place in, you know, the, the, the political space. But how do you sway these voters away from the umbrella and the broom? What, I mean, I like the fact that, as he said, the ADC has 12 political uh, presidential aspirants, something that's never really happened before. But then the voters who we're targeting here have we gotten to that point where we have outgrown the PDP and the APC and then begin to say, well, I'm not going to vote for the party. I'm going to vote for a person. Let me, let me, let me tell I'm, you. I'm sorry, this, this, this question, is, the question is for Punabo. The question is for Punabo. Uh, I, was, I was one of those that criticized the Supreme Court judgment that said you vote for the parties that are not the individuals. Because in Nigeria, yeah, the political parties have no ideology. And in Nigeria, the election votes for the individuals. They, they are godfathers and so on. They don't vote for parties. If today your principal is a member of PDP and it defects to another political party, all his followers will defect with him to that political party. It has nothing to do with the party. It has to do with your principal. Mm. So if it will be has the clout, for example, as is leaving the PDP, just as when he left the, uh, when he left the Africa, those who were his loyalists left with him to PDP. Now he's leaving the PDP. They will all leave with him for, for, for uh, leave the PDP with him to any political party he's going to. So it has nothing to do with the political party because we don't, unlike America, where you have ideologies and you believe in the party ideology, and that is why you're a member of that party. In Nigeria, it's not like that. You're a member of that party because your boss is a member, your mentor is a member of that party, and that is why you're a member of that party. Mm. So when it comes to polarization. 
it will definitely not going to affect each of you because he's going to live with those that believe in him and those that see him as a mentor. It's definitely, definitely, that is the truth about it. Hmm. Well, gentlemen, uh, time is not on our side. Well, let's hope upon hope that things would change for the better. Um, Opunaboni Kotaira is a political analyst. Ezekiel Nyaitok is a politician. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for speaking with us. Thank you. I'm going to be very All right. Well, thank you all for staying with us. We have come to the end of the show tonight. But don't forget, tomorrow is another day. Uh, of course, we will be talking for development at 7 p.m. right here on Plus Politics. I'm Mary Anacle. Do have a great evening.